What is up, Storm fans? Brent Cook, and I am excited today. I am playing the card Wish from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Pretty excited about that. This is actually a donation deck from Nick Sheard. Thank you, Nick. I really do appreciate it and your support here on this channel. Nick paid to watch me play Wish, and this is my own deck list. Uh, Nick sent me one, but I've modified it a little bit, so I'm going to say that it's mine. I've made some more than normal changes. Nick uh, did the $50 donation deck, so it's the super tier. Thank you. I'll, I'll cover the donation tiers in a minute. But Nick gave me some creative liberties to improve the deck list, and this is actually what I would play moving forward and modern at the moment. So let's do a more in-depth deck tech today, and if you don't want to watch a longer deck tech, just skip ahead, but we're really going to break down this deck list today. So the first thing is a breeding pool. That's odd. I don't normally play green. Well, we're playing four copies of Veil somewhere in the board today, and for good reasons. We didn't gain anything from Modern Horizons 2, which is sort of why I haven't recorded with the stock list in a few weeks. Uh, but our opponents did. They got Prismatic Ending. Well, Defense Grid seems sort of embarrassing now, right? Uh, so that led me to not wanting to play Defense Grid. I started looking at playing four copies of Pact Negation because of Pact allows you to play the game very quickly. Um, because you can just like jam on turn three against a blue deck and have Pact for Force of Negation. That said, it's a little bit narrow. Um, I don't love it. Like, it might be a, a plan I try in the future. I'm just not going to try it today. And instead, there's been a lot of black decks in the metagame, and Veil vale Summer is just a more versatile card. So instead, I'm going to try playing Veil vale today and just get a little bit more out of my sideboard space. In a more control-heavy metagame, I could certainly see playing Pact Negation. Then it's a cantrip, which is something we definitely want against blue decks because we want to keep up drawing through our deck, keeping the density really high. So I do like that. Flooded Strand, we're playing eight fetches today. It's worth noting. We needed to find room for the, the breeding pool for the Veil of Summer. It was, even, it was either the second island or the ninth fetch. And to me, having two basics for like Field of Rune or even Blood Moon it's worth it. Uh, you might not agree with this. I understand. I added in uh, how many? Three blue sources that don't add black mana for Wishclaw Talisman. I know some of you are rolling in your graves right now. That's fine. I'm trying something out today. Not everyone needs to like my deck list. Uh, Lotus Field, the name of the deck. We are playing Twiddle Storm based around Lotus Field. Card's terrific. Do not, and I repeat, do not put a copy of one of these in your board. It is wrong. That means at the very earliest you can win on turn five. That is terrible because on turn three, you can't play Field, which means you have to play Wish on turn four. You're not going to have the mana to untap Lotus Field. It's just an awful play pattern. In fact, I don't run Teleria West because it's so slow. Wish for field is even slower. Do not do this. Please, I'm begging you. It is wrong. And then the second copy of Steam Bents. Uh, we are playing more red cards, but the primary reason, if you ever want to wish into a red card and you don't have Lotus, you need more than one. And it just increases our chances of having a red source anyway, so I'm a fan of that. Two Watery Grave, you know, they cast these Wish Claws and the pushes. Good stuff. All right, so the rest of the deck is pretty stock until we get to two copies of Sleight of Hand. This is where I changed Nick's list a little bit. Uh, Nick had four Slight, and nothing wrong with that, but it's the card we brought out the most. And I wanted to change the deck list a little bit because Nick was all in on four copies of Wish, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just not what I would play. So Nick cut the Perilous Voyage and the Grape Shot from the main deck, and those were additional copies of Wish. And I think that's a little bit flawed personally because you still lose just to a meddling mage, which is something we were trying to avoid in the beginning. And while well, they're unlikely to name Wish today, it's entirely possible they name Wish tomorrow. And you just don't want to put yourself in that position. So one of the strengths of playing Wish Clock Talisman is the flexibility of getting your Perilous Voyage and your Grape Shot. By moving all these effects to the board, you're actually slowing down your answers. Because Wish into Void Snare, Wish into Push, then that's a four mana line where you then need additional mana to untap and win. So I don't think that's actually that great. Uh, where if you play the Talisman, it's a lot cheaper to just go Wish Claw, Perilous Voyage, kill you. That's a three mana line with an untap, obviously. 
So I'm still a fan of playing Perilous Voyage in the main and Grape Shot. You don't have to. You could probably get away with just one. But today I will be playing two. I think that it just gives you increased flexibility. And if you cut the Grape Shot, my fear is that you're going to have lines where you have Wish Claw Talisman, but you're going to need to Wish Claw into Wish in a grape shot which is an eight mana line and how often do you have to eat spare mana in this deck I, I i feel like that's a trap and i like the voyage for being able to answer permanence which is why i chose to run both of these obviously puppetry and ideas are two of the best cards in the deck you shouldn't play less than those wish claw you could argue that like maybe you don't play four of this i think that's wrong because it finds lotus it adds that consistency it's part of the reason i don't like the landless twiddle decks that much if i'm being honest because they're less consistent you really just want to get lotus every single game by turn three and wish claw helps with that one copy of breach we did cut one to make room for a wish that is one of the slots that i gave up i gave up sleight of hand two sleight of hands and then a breach and i chose to only run three copies of wish and then passed in flames so when i was originally tinkering with nick's list I'm sorry, Nick, I did a lot of tinkering. Uh, I cut the past in flames initially. And then I started thinking about it. And because Nick's list originally had ad nauseum, underworld breach, past in flames, AV, Aria, and the board. It's just a lot of ways to win the game. And you don't need that many. So in my mind, if you could get breach, why would you ever get past in flames? And we'll cover this in a second, but let's skip ahead. Uh, so why would you ever get past in flames? It's just a more expensive line that does something very similar. It's just not very intuitive. And at least this way, if you play the past in flames in the wishes main deck, you can get them with peer, right? So some people complained previously that peer uh, putting breach on the bottom was the worst. I get that. I really do. So here we have more ways of getting breach with peer by getting wish, which is probably going to add some stability to this deck if I'm being honest. So I do like that. It's just a little bit more expensive now. And the, so one of the beautiful things about this deck is obviously I mentioned the peer for this, but wish into underworld breach is five mana. If you have a untapped blue source and twiddles in your graveyard, assuming that you have a reasonably stocked graveyard, you can cast twiddle, untap your lotus field, and then twiddle again, wish for tome scour, and then create this loop. So you can cast tome scour and twiddle off that three mana and you net plus one card every time. Uh, you don't net any mana, but you net plus one card every time. And eventually you'll be able to untap, twiddle, grape shot or something else. So there is a infinite loop with milling yourself, which will also allow you to eventually cast wish for Thassa's Oracle in the face of Blossoming Calm. So we actually have an answer to Blossoming Calm now for Modern Horizons 2 as well, built into our deck. I really like that. Um, because that's a card that I was a little bit concerned with previously, and my answer was Defense Grid. Well, now I don't even have to worry about Defense Grid. I can just win with Thassa's Oracle. And if we're ever faced against Heliod Company, we have the built-in answer. That said, Heliod hasn't been super popular the last month or so, but we just get to beat it all the time now, so that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, so that's the main deck. And then moving to the board, Wish impact negation you don't have to pick the card immediately with wish so you could just cast wish start comboing and if your opponent decides to interact meaningfully you can just pack it uh for free i do like that quite a bit uh no copies of spell pierce because we're running the veil of summer so this is our only actual counter spell on the sideboard i mentioned home scholar with the synergy with breach void snares are a generic catch-all I think with wish we'll be leaving it in our board i was boarding it in previously but now i think i'll be leaving it I mentioned Oracle, push is just generic quick hate for Blitz or burn for Eidolon. It's a card that gets boarded in. Uh, so far, Void Snare doesn't get boarded in, this doesn't get boarded in, this doesn't. Push is our first real cyborg card. I'd imagine we're leaving Grape Shot there just in case there's a game where we need to wish Grape Shot. You don't want to have to uh, find a weird way of winning because you're not playing two win cons. This is like running double tendrils like the Epic Storm and Legacy. We mentioned how good Breach is. Aria is a card I don't expect to wish for. I do expect to board it in way more often. So this is these are board cards, same thing with Veil of Summer. And then AV is a card I'm probably going to leave in the board for Wish. It's an easy way of beating Graveyard Hate. 
Uh, same thing with Aria, but Aria, it's complicated because you're going to expend resources into Wish to play Aria, and now you need to cast a bunch more spells. I don't know how likely that's going to be. I think it's actually cheaper to win with AV than it is Wish Aria. Um, yeah, so that's what I have to say about that. That is the deck list. Thank you again for the donation deck. All right, so here's the donation deck information if you want to submit like Nick did. So we have our base tier, which is just me playing your exact 75. Nick signed up for the super tier because Nick is an MVP. Nick got 10% off of the Epic Storm merchandise that are just glorious things that you can purchase. On top of me helping improve your deck list like we're doing today, Nick, you're the real hero. And we're going to play that deck list. Then with the Epic tier, Nick could have joined me in this video. Yeah, it's true. And then on top of that, 15% off all Epic Storm merchandise. We even get into the nitty gritty with things like sideboard mapping, etc. We really fine tune your deck. But if you're not interested in that, you can always just go directly to the epicsroom.com slash shop, pick up your mini token packs from 20 baseball tee, pine glass pen, token, play mat, shirt, etc. Those are great ways of supporting us. But if you would also like to support us, make sure to subscribe. It's the it's the easiest way to do it. It's literally free. So why wouldn't you do it? Really? And if you're already subscribed, make sure to like and comment. Get us into that YouTube algorithm. I would greatly appreciate that. And one final way that you can support us today, it's pretty new if you're unfamiliar. I realize I haven't made a modern video in a little bit, but you can become a member. You can join this channel, unlock suite badges and emotes. I would highly recommend it. Um, yeah, and then we have multiple tiers. So if you choose to do one of the upper level tiers, you can get half off a monthly donation deck or a free donation deck every single month keep that combo content coming. I think that's all I have to say on the intro. I realize it might have been a little bit long, but I'm excited to play this deck list today. This is what I would play if I was entering a tournament tomorrow with Twiddlestorm, and Nick made this happen, so thank you, Nick. All right, I'll see you in round number one. Enough talking. Let's storm some people today. Hey there, match number one. A few things I meant to mention during the intro, but I just forgot. So the first thing is some of you have been commenting recently about how my audio levels are a little bit low. Well, I turned up my gain and then I added in some OBS filters. So now my audio should be crisp, clean, a little bit louder. Let me know what you think, if it's true or if it's not, whatever. I'd like to hear it. This is my second video recording with these settings. so. Hopefully they've been an improvement. Yeah. Anyway, the other change that I wanted to mention was with Nick's list, there was an AV in the board and then there was an ad nauseum. I chose to run one of them because I feel like they fill the same role of beating graveyard hate. Well, with AV, you just cast it and then have to live a turn. With ad nauseum, we actually added in a bunch of mana into our deck. We're now running three wish. So you cast a wish to get the ad nauseum. That means that there's still at least two wish still in your deck. And then you have the Past in Flames. So you have some expensive cards in your deck. If you chose to run two copies of Breach, that would lower your converted mana cost a little bit. But that line is still a nine mana line because you need at least one mana floating. With AV, it's just an eight mana line. You don't have to worry about lucky flips. I think it's probably just a little bit safer. That's, that's just what I had to say. Hopefully you found it insightful. But let's just get into the match. <sighs> match number one. Laris of the Dreamed In, the modern companion. It's in every deck. Um, I want to keep this, but if we don't find Lotus, this is going to look really embarrassing. I think we're probably supposed to ship it. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to bottom wish here. It's just we're not at the point in the game where wish matters. We just need to find Lotus Field and an extra land. This hand's ready to go off, assuming that we do find it. All right, Watery Grave and Sleight of Hand. Guess we're taking another Sleight of Hand. Okay, we want to draw a second land into Lotus Field. Okay, this looks like Jund. Hex Trinker is very Jund-like. Okay, deck, be there. Well, we found land two, that's a good starting point. Probably don't need to cast Reach, I can do it on their end step, gain a little bit more info. Could also next turn Reach, tap down something if we wanted, but I think it's probably better to just uh, cycle this, trying to draw into your Lotus Field. 
This is a matchup where the Cyborg Veils will come in handy. Another Bloodstained Mire from the opponent. Grim Flare, sure. All right, let's just get the island. No need to lose extra life. And okay, I'll take it. We need it to not be destroyed by Abrupt Decay, but this could mean a win next turn. I say could because it's possible, but not guaranteed. Once at 14 life. Just play Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Come on. Ooh. What will they discard? Inquisition of Kozilek. They do not have Delirium yet for the Grim Flare. Grim Flare was a card that was very powerful for a couple years, and then it's sort of fallen off the map. But with everything being so Delirium focused, maybe it can still compete? I'm not sure. So the card that I would want to keep the most is actually Psychic Puppetry. Let's see what the opponent thinks is the correct pick. I wouldn't be shocked if it was Dream Script or Ideas Inbound. And they chose the Twiddle. Okay, that's a play that buys time. Okay, so we're taking four here. Another Grim Flare to the graveyard. Maelstrom Pulse. Okay. Hmm. Should I give them Claw? I think the answer is probably yes. I just need the field. And if they use Claw, that means we're just getting it back, which is fine by me. Okay, uh, these are probably fine. They both make mana with their pup. Worst case, though, would be if they discard uh, Psychic Puppetry without using the Wish Claw, then that would be bad. Okay, so we're taking at least uh, six this turn. They could turn on Delirium. Um, they're one away and then pump the Hex Drinker. That would be 10. Not really sure what their plan is here. It looks like it's just deal six. Another Grim Flare activation. So if they didn't take Puppetry last turn, I don't know if they'd take it this turn, but you never know. The, t the discarding of Dream's Grip last turn was a buy time, and they might take the puppetry now. Well, they didn't, uh, because it's no longer a buy time situation. Okay. So it's pretty free for us to just start off on the ideas. We can save the reaches in case we draw into Serum Visions, like that. All right. Um, it's free for us to go to four and remove a land in the deck. So let's do that. One holding up a possible abrupt decay or something along those lines. So breach is not a guaranteed win here. Wish is a good pickup, and I will keep the other reach on top. Like I said, they're literally just free storm and mana, so there's no reason to not keep them. Okay, splice again. A little bit of a lag there threw me off. Okay. Psychic Puppetry, although Maelstrom Pulse is an answer to Eve, or Eve, as I've been corrected on the Eternal Glory podcast. You can check that out in the link above. Um, yeah. So, probably play Peer here. I don't know if I want to burn the Dream Scripts yet. Take the ideas. Okay. Plenty of mana. Ding. All right, so sorry, it's my mic is covering up the screen a, a little bit. Untap. Add some red. So even if our opponent has a decay here, we can respond with a bunch of spells. All right, let's ideas. Remove three lands from the game. Yeah, unfortunately for our opponent, they're just dead. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will untap Lotus Field, remove land, and we can just remove all of our sorceries without worrying about it. Do it again. 
uh, slates of sorcery, serum visions, ideas, so many manas. I guess we can reach, like drawing your card's pretty free, but we already have wish for grape shot as well. Okay. I would like to untap as peer. This is just delightful. Get out of here, trophy. Actually, I probably don't want to use red. Okay. Click, click, click. Other ideas inbound. It's beautiful. All right, that can resolve. We don't have another island in our deck. It should be exiled, so I guess it's free to shuffle out. Like, it doesn't hurt anything. Now that untaps. Yep. Do I even want to show them Wish? Probably not. I feel like you're showing them Wish can only hurt us. So instead, let's just get the main deck grape shot. And end of game number one. Woot woot. All right, so black green, like I mentioned, Veil Summer is probably pretty good here. I do not want Aria Flame. That is not a card I am interested in. So we could probably board out Slates pretty easily. I want to keep the Perilous Voyage. Um, it's just a nice catch-all. They're most likely a, um, what is it called? Void Winter War deck. So you could argue that you're supposed to board out Past in Flames. I don't know. But they also have the out to AV or Eve. So it's a little bit weird. Like our opponent's deck is actually pretty good against us. But we are also boarding in protection for our breach now, which is kind of nice. I do enjoy that. All right, so let's just focus on finding two cards to take out. I think we can probably shave a twiddle and maybe a wish or the past in flames. Let's do the Past in Flames, just to dodge Graveyard Hate a little bit. I don't mind that at all. Well, we've opened up the Breach and a Wish Claw. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep this. Lots of cantrips tend to be pretty good against this card. We're going to Catacombs for the opponent into Overgrown Tomb. Likely a discard spell coming here. Inquisition of Kozilek. I think the correct pick here is Wishclaw Talisman because just the value of finding Lotus Field is so high. That said, if they are sitting on something like Abrupt Decay, you could argue that maybe they shouldn't take it. Uh, Wish is not a very good draw here. Uh, but we do get to cycle these reaches, hopefully hit land number two. Getting a Watery Grave with this in case we rip the land for Claw. Best start. Okay. I'm just going to cycle. Did not hit the land. Visions. Yikes. Okay. So the four power on the board looks pretty scary to me at the moment just because we're turns away from finding Lotus Field or putting it into play. And that's assuming our opponent doesn't follow up with this card. Hmm. They could level swing six. That's another option. Speed that clock up even more. Six and eight is not lethal, though. So I don't know. I guess it speeds it up one turn. They're just going to level. All right, deck, land. I think it's just too slow. Yeah. I'm just rather than give them info, I'm going to concede. We just didn't hit the land in time. All right, sort of a bummer. Uh, let's just resubmit. I think our deck list is fine. We just need to draw a little bit better. I'm not sure what I could have actually done there other than, you know, draw a land. Luris. Um, don't love these. I think this is actually a mulligan. Like, it's essentially a five card hand at the moment. Sure. 
Okay. You could argue that I wasn't supposed to play the fetch this turn, that I should have just played the island. And I think I'm going to take a draw here just to see if I draw a wish claw or a veil. Okay, so I can actually tap their land in their upkeep. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I think I like the looks of that. Taking the black source here just because a, a wish claw is going to be pretty important. Yes, I would like to tap. Serum Visions is fine, helps us dig. I'm okay with this. But if I draw another land, I can peer again. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Just slowing our opponent down. Okay, upkeep peer. Tap your green source. Sort of a bummer. A lot of good cards in here. Uh, I think Twiddle's the right pick, though. We don't have a green source for Veil, or else that would be the right pick. Chalice of the Void. Was not expecting that. We do have um, Perilous Voyage in our deck. So strange. Once again, I'm going to tap their land in their upkeep. Guess we take Wish here. So far away from winning this, I feel like. That's a, an eventual clock. Okay, I'm going to play ideas as just, you know, careful study. We hit the Lotus Field, which is huge. Um, so let's play that. And move to discard. This is so strange to me. Uh, probably get rid of the Visions, the Strand. Now, the next question is, what's the next card? And I don't have a good answer. Um, part of me thinks that I should keep the puppetry, though. And if I just, if I keep both lands, I could actually set up an AV line in two turns. If we think that's actually fast enough. Yeah, I think that might be the line. It's a little bit wild, but let's see what we can do. So next turn would just be like Steven's pass. Then we could fetch for our island. And then it would be wish, puppetry on tap, puppetry on tap. Okay. Or Eve. I gotta stop saying Eve. That's pretty good. Um, I think I should save this though. For next turn for Storm. Because it's just like a free spell next turn. And that just means that we get more copies of Ooze. I really hope our opponent's entire hand is just one drops. Like just full of discard spells and hex drinkers. That's what you get for playing a chalice on one. Don't have to worry about discard spells here for the most part, I think. I Like I guess there's... I don't even want to say it out loud now that I thought of it. Uh, I'll say it at the end of their turn. How about that? Seeing it before they could cast it just makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, turret player loses two life and... Okay. It's a little bit weird. So maybe if they milled creatures, they would have had lethal. Is that the idea? Okay, if I needed to, I could puppetry to tap down their team... I don't think I want to. So we're going to go to four here. There is a card in their deck that I'm worried about. We saw it in game one. All right, so Collective Brutality was the card I was afraid of there. Um, now it's Eve time. So I want to get the island here because that keeps us clear of another copy of Witherbloom. All right, we're going to splice because that makes this free. Another puppetry is good, because it's a spell we can cast into the Eve. These don't matter. Untap. 
Okay, so we just want to burn these. There's no point in splicing because we can't uh, double splice. Like, that's not a thing. Some of you comment in videos being like, Brian, why didn't you use double splice? It's not a thing. You can't do it. That's why. <laughs> so, no, you cannot splice puppetry on a puppetry. It's just not the way that it works. Okay, so we have a red off of the steam vents. And the next time we tap this will be for green. Okay. So I think I probably could have burned the reach, so that way I could have gotten an extra storm with Veil. That's probably a mistake on my part. This I know is going to get countered. And now we just make a bunch of giant ooze. <sighs> was Eve good enough? some big ooze. We know that our opponent has the out in their deck, though. We saw it in game one. So if I swing out next turn, let's say they block like a 4-4. Four four. We still have lethal. I'm just like trying to figure out if I alpha strike, assuming that I even get to alpha strike. Doesn't matter. All right, so they had a trophy. Kill their 9-9 nine -nine news, it's pretty disrespectful. Okay. Well, they can eat that one, so that's why. And another ooze. Hmm. I just want to think through this. So if I go get Perilous Voyage with Wish Claw, bounce this. Let's say they block the three biggest or the three smallest creatures. Is there a way that they can live? So let's say they block here, because that's a natural trade, uh, taking the 3-3. Three, three. This becomes a 3-3, three, three. could eat a choo-choo. I think this actually does it. Yeah, you know, let's bounce that goif. It is still in my deck, right? There it is. Okay, so we're bouncing that. Double ideas inbound, yes please. Okay, now we alpha strike, because counting's for losers, right? Um, I should actually probably think about this. So... They're in 19. So they trump this. They trump this. Block here. So let's say I leave those back. Um... Oh, I gave them, oh my, I gave them the out. <sighs> Maybe they boarded it out. Um, so let's think this through. So let's say they trump these two, and then they block the 3-3. Three, three. So they would take 2, 6, 12, 17. Yeah, I think I just need to make them have like they would have had to leave it in um i think that's the thing here is i need to make them have the pulse <sighs> so if they next turn wish call for just a removal spell and then swing that also would have been lethal so i need to leave four back well hold on if i swing with this many they have to block one or else it's just lethal. So if that's the case, can I swing with this? No. Alright. I, I have to just hope they sided it out. It's kind of annoying, but the difference on that one uh, copy of Pier might have been the difference maker here. Okay. Yep, and now they just get their out. So if I had spliced the pier, because it actually, I think it would have been countered, so that might have been wrong. I think Chalice still would have countered it. Yeah, that's just wrong. Never mind. That didn't matter. Chalice would still counter the pier even if it was spliced. So that didn't matter. My bad. But now they have to have the out in their deck. 
Is it there? So I think they're trying to get me on the trample trick. So I should just put two in front. So what what happened is I would block and then they would trophy the Eve and then I can't uh, assign any blockers and then they trample over for four and instead we played around that. It turns out they boarded out the Maelstrom Pulse and we are the victors in our first match. That was a wild match. Uh, I don't think I played it perfectly, but it was a lot of fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. That was match number one. Stick around for match number two. Let me know what you think. I have some weird news. Our opponent has revealed Kahira, which I believe means that they're on straight just blue-white control. I think that means that this hand's a keep. Uh, all these cantrips and just sculpting, etc. Okay, not blue-white control. Are they actually on like a cat deck? That would be kind of funny. Uh, a little shock here. Here's a good pickup. We want to find lands. Did not hit a land. Do I want either of these? Probably not. And puppetry number three was a very bad draw. We did not want that at all. Okay, so we're looking for land two and then lotus field. Oh, they're on elementals. Okay, this is a real deck. Wish was not a good pickup either. Yikes. All right, well, we found land two. Just pass, I guess. I've yet to face the elementals deck. I don't really know what it does. So if you're like watching this asking why am I punting so much, that's why I have no experience against this deck. And I don't even know. I, I assume that it's a combo deck. So I'm going to need to see their combo being executed because I don't understand it. You have a Risen Reef. Okay. So there's no elementals in the graveyard, so that shouldn't matter. Okay. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure this out. And just in case we draw into Wishclaw, I want the Black Source. Cycle. Okay. Good draw. Good draw, Doc. I'm finally proud of you. So I think we're going to get to execute the... Um, what is it called? the wish breach line here so let's twiddle i don't even know if this deck is a four stack i should probably check that out on goldfish uh five color elementals subtlety no force negation okay let's splice land Okay, so now we can peer. Probably want this other peer, not the voyage. Just free spells. All right, puppetry. That's going to make it so we don't need to do the breach loop, unfortunately. We'll still cast breach most likely, but it's not required to do the loop, I think. Don't hold me to that. Not a math doctor. All right, so we're clicking. Click, click, click. Add three red. Okay. And now we play Underworld Breach. I want to keep the red floating, I think. Twiddle. And just exile the lands. All right, add uh, blue, I guess. What am I doing? I don't need to do that. I can just add red. I guess it's technically a little bit safer to do blue and then twiddle and untap and all that good stuff, but this is just a clean kill. Turn three, win against elementals. Um, I've actually just like never looked at this deck in my life. So look, like I said, they had subtlety, but no force negation. This is like just a recent list. Uh, so Foundation Breaker is a real thing. Endurance is a card we should expect. Um, and they just didn't have their one of main deck there. So we should be worried about Endurance. Okay, Fulminator Mage. Pretty sweet looking deck. 
Sea canisters last. The fairy, that doesn't matter. Force and negations in the board. Is that a normal thing? Camping sphere. We already clicked on canisters. I meant to click on this one. Force of vigor. These lists are just like a little all over the place when it comes to cyborg options. Um, but endurance, I think, is just like a, a card we need to respect. So I think we probably want Arya's. Maybe side out a wish. Or we can do one Arya, three wishes. This gives us Arya as a wish target. I think it's pretty unlikely, but I don't know. This seems fine to me. Let's get endurance. Yes, I would like to keep the sand. Okay. Don't mind the peer draw. We do need a land too. Let's just get the grave. All right, land two. All right, so that was a good draw, but now we need land two. We have two looks for it on next turn, but I would love to hit the land. It would make this draw just so explosive. They're going to pass. All right, visions. Rip. Um... I don't think we actually need Wish Claw, so I'm going to discard that. Part of the reason why is I don't want to open myself up to, you know, like it being destroyed when we have everything we need already as long as we hit that land. Grief. That hurts. Um, okay. So they're on a skeletal build, which I don't think we saw previously in those deck lists. Maybe we did. That hurt. Really getting punished here. Lands, why do you hate me? And now they get to grief us again. Am I supposed to be boarding in Vale of Summer? I mean, I guess we could board in Veil of Summer for game three if there is one. <sighs> Why do you not love me, Doc? This is part of the reason that I don't like uh, putting a Lotus in the board. One, it makes your main deck Lotuses harder to find. But how often do you have just three mana to throw away? Well, if we had to draw a non-land, Puppetry's not the worst. I just have a feeling that we're dead. Okay. Let's go to the next game. I'm going to bring in some Veil of Summers. Um, let's pour those out. And these. Let's try this. It's good to keep one wish in the deck as like a backdoor. That was a bummer. That hand had a lot of potential. This is fine. So the question is whether or not I fetch for the green source on turn one. Or do I shuffle away my Serum Vision Scries? So I think I'm going to fetch for the green source. And just cast Visions. Uh, bottom the island, keep visions. So, it is a dead giveaway that we boarded into Veil of Summer. And we don't actually have Veil up on turn one for this grief. Kind of a bummer. Yeah, so I this can also come back with the, uh, the red creature. I forget its name. Thunder Can Awakener, which is a really good synergy for the opponent. Be interesting to see what they choose here. If it's Veil of Summer or one of the other cards. They chose Pier. Okay. Good to know. Let's Visions. 
Maybe you just want to find Lotus. Okay. And they're just passing. So they don't have a whole lot going on. Neither do we, to be fair. Yikes. Oops, all twiddles. Wonderful mana base we have here. All right, they hit land two, so their uh, Awakener is going to come online next turn. All right, lots of lands. And they hit the third land, so something like Skeletal's live now. Risen Reef. I could cycle Veil here. I'm not going to. I think it's pretty important we play around uh, some of the other stuff they have going on. Okay, good draw. So it's not often that I'm willing to just burn Twiddles for Wishclaw Talisman, but next turn will be a situation where I think it's worth it. All right, so no Force of Negation. Even if they did, we could give them Claw. What are you going to do? Probably do need to be a little bit worried about Endurance as well. Okay. I mean, it would make sense why they kept this hit. I don't know if the Skeletal was play Endurance. So there's one in this list I'm looking at. But they're all pretty unique. Like, I don't think there's like a defined rule. Like, this one's for Skeletal, for Endurance. So I don't think we can just like have a definitive answer here. Okay. So is this going to be a combo turn? So we can activate Claw, Twiddle, activate Claw. So we would get like Lotus and Ideas Unbound. Is that good enough? I don't know. I think I'm actually just going to pass here. We just need something else to do. Like, I just think going all in on ideas inbound while we're trying to beat endurance is just sort of a tall ask. There's probably some sort of combo kill that I'm not understanding with Risen Reef that's going to just murder me. Like, there has to be some sort of Risen Reef combo. All right, so they're just going to hard cast grief, and I will veil of summer. Grape shot, not really a card I wanted. It, if I'm being honest, like it's just going to be so difficult to build up that high on storm count. But I guess if they didn't cast a black card, grape shot is better than a veil of summer. Hmm. Okay, so. Draw step. Well, that was actually a good draw. Sure. So, do you discard Grape Shot or you discard one of my four Twiddles? And they chose Grape Shot. Okay. So, blue, blue. Because now we don't need to search for ideas anymore, which is just like really big game. Uh, we can do untap this. Yes. Three. All right, so let's start off by doing this. We're going to untap. Yes, I would like to untap. Activate again. Untap. So we're going to get three cards off this Wishclaw Talisman, which is pretty sweet. Okay. So how do we best beat Endurance? So we probably want... I just don't know if Underworld Breach is going to be good enough. I think we definitely want a Psychic Puppetry. And then I think it's sort of a no-brainer on one ideas, and then the last one is what I'm unsure about. It's probably just another Ideas Inbound. Okay, uh, let's leave that untapped. All right, ideas unbound. 
Not the best. Kind of bad. Also kind of bad. Ah, uh, jeez. So I could play... I can't believe that draw six was that awful. I guess I could lean into losing to Endurance. So we have four mana, six mana, seven mana. I only need six. Um, alternatively, I think I could Wishclaw for another uh, Ideas and just hope that the Ideas wins. Creep Shot's in the graveyard. So it's Ideas versus Breach right now. So let's think, if I played Aria, I would have to cast seven spells. I just don't think that's possible either. I don't know what the right play is here. Well, it's pretty free to cast Twiddle. I mean, Breach just wins the game if they don't have Endurance. My problem with getting ideas is that there's only one other ideas in the deck, so it would have to be just like the best draw three. So I think that means that we should get Breach and just accept losing to Endurance. <sighs> yep. That's sort of a bummer. I mean, our draws were just not very good off the ideas, so now we're going to discard and likely just be dead. All right, so we're going to start next turn with six mana and no hand. All right, so sure, Risen Reef, copy. I don't know if there was a better line I could have taken there. Do they have lethal? Um, so endurance or grief are both three power. That's lethal. So yep. Okay, no one tapping. Let's see what our top card would have been. And it's not even gonna let me. Alright, one and one. Let me know if you thought I could have done something differently that game. I'd be really interested. I'm probably gonna rewatch this at some point. All right, 1-1, one, one, round three coming up. Okay, round three, once again, Alurus of the Dream Den. It is a companion world, and we're uh, living on the outside. Uh, the sand is so close, but if you don't draw the land, or if Wishclaw Talisman gets discarded, that's really bad. So I think I'm going to Mulligan. This is a much better hand. Uh, I think we bought... Um, the twiddle here. Much better. Okay, so probably shadow. Okay. Just gonna cast a sleight of hand here off an island. Take the twiddle. Next turn we play Wishclaw Talisman, assuming it's still in our hand. Bloodstained Mire. And it is Shadow. Yep. Goodbye, Wishclaw. Getting rid of a Scourge. So they're going for the Fast Delirium plan, most likely. Kind of shocking to see them bin that. Maybe if this is a Bolt, that makes more sense. Follow up Thoughtseize. Aggressive. Also a very good start. Okay, they're just leaving us with the reach. No confidence in the uh, Kamigawa Common. Um, visions. I think Wish is actually fine here. Because it could get Breach. So if that's the case, do I secretly leave Wish on top? like two under like do i keep the island and i think i don't want island so i'm just going to leave it like that okay so now it's going to be unleashed delirious whatever you would like to call it and we're going to 10 when it's holding up drown in the lock 
So this might actually be a tough game for us to win. Okay. Next, so we're going to seven right now. Their last card's totally a drown in the lock. Okay. Ooh, it resolved. So if we get Twiddle, I just want to talk, I just want to think through this. If we take Twiddle, five, six. Yeah, we could try the loop here. Um, yes. All right, so we dream script now. Untap. I want to make sure that I'm not messing this up anyhow. I think I'm supposed to burn the puppetry. Yes. Add a bunch of red mana. Cast a wish. Okay. Underworld Breach. Okay, so I just want to... Let's count. So I need to cast... I need more mana floating. Sorry. I forgot to mute. Okay, so I'm now muted. I need to cast Twiddle twice into Wish. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, we have enough. Okay. All right, so now we'll add blue again. Twiddle. Remove Island Grave. Visions. Kind of glad we're getting to show this loop. It's pretty sweet, assuming that it works. Yes, untap. All right, so now we cast Wish. Get rid of these. Get Tome Scour. So this is plus one card in the graveyard on every loop. All right, so now we twiddle. This should be game. Okay. Reach slight. Twiddle on tap. All right, this feels like old school pioneer right now. I love it. Scour. Probably don't need that many wishes. Scour again. And our opponent's going to concede. We got to do it. I mean, we didn't get to cast Grape Shot or Thassa's Oracle, but we got to loop, which is pretty sweet. I think they just got bored of sitting there, if I'm being honest. Uh, this seems like a match where Fatal Push isn't the worst. I also like uh, Veil here. Aria seems really good. So that's a lot of cards. I don't know if we're going to be able to board in all of these. But Past and Flame seems okay. Wish is probably a card we can shave on a little bit. Maybe board out the Voyage. I don't know if that's actually a card we need here. We definitely board out the Slights. But then we still need four slots. It's a tall ask. So I definitely want Veils. The slot that I, I'm less confident on here is Push. I think that we just try to get by without it. Maybe Shave a Twiddle. Um, and then we need one more slot. Hmm. Is it a puppetry? I don't know. Let's try this. I'm not super confident in this board plan. Uh, I just don't have a lot of experience with this new sideboard. Like, it feels like we might be overboarding uh, just a hair. Maybe I'm supposed to leave one Aria in the board. For Wish. Because this is a matchup where, like, Wish for Aria is actually, like, pretty effective. Let's try that. So, my fear is, like, against discard decks, if they discard puppetry, it actually buys them a lot of time. But you don't actually want to draw multiple of them either. So you're stuck in this weird catch-22 situation. I think you're probably supposed to leave it. I'm, I'm just not positive. I suppose you could also like board up past in flames for the area too and just like try to not lose the graveyard hate. It's an alternative. Yes, I will keep this delightful hand. 
F6 through the first turn. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. And double pop. And they just have uh, the turn one, you know, shot go. We do not have Veil Summer, unfortunately. I think I'm actually supposed to shock into reach in case we draw something good. Like a wish claw. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to shock here because I want this to be able to get green. I don't want to get cut off a of color. It is one thing about stretching your mana base a little bit thin with this four color list. Visions is a good draw. Second build, not so much. Um, I'm just going to cast this, see what we draw before I decide to play turn or not. Leave that on top. Okay. They're definitely representing a lot of counter spells here, for a counter spell here at least. Sure. 14. If they tap out here, it could be a dare for us to try to win. I don't know what they'd be tapping out for. I guess Polaris to your hand, but that doesn't seem worth it. Scourge. Hmm. We lose to Stub. Or Mystical Dispute. They've been representing that effect all game, too. So I could, in theory, try to win here. I think that's what I'm going to do. And they have the stub. Yep. Now we probably died a team or battle rage. Correct time. Soul guide. Okay. If we get to untap, there's a chance we can just grape shot for time. Question is what their what is their last card? It's a shadow. All right, so they're daring us to win. Let's see if we can make the most of it. Steam vents. We have to win this turn, so I'm fine with just starting on the twiddle. It doesn't really matter that much. I want to find like an ideas off this. Past in flames is not going to be good enough. Um, or would it? So this is going to untap. We'd have five mana floating. I just want to think through this. We'd have five mana floating. Six mana, I'm sorry, six mana. Uh, we cast past in flames. They use soul guide. So that'd be storm three. In response, storm four, five. Six, seven, eight. It's two storm short. Uh, but what's the alternative here? I guess I could try to tap their soul guide with psychic puppetry. See if we can cheese a win. And the answer is yes. Get cheesed. All right, two and one. <laughs> Feels bad winning that way, but like, pay attention. I don't know. All right. All right, round four, Joe 77. I have no idea what Joe is playing, but I'm going to try this. We have a path to a, uh, a Lotus. Seems like a keep. First opponent without a companion. Joe, I don't know what you were thinking. You must be playing uh, Twiddle Storm or not. I do like the second claw, though. Could have fetched there to thin. Maybe I should have. I don't know. Inquisition. Likely taking a claw here if I had a guess. Womp womp. Will we get to put our other claw into play? The answer was no sad is this just like eight rack or something i'm not really sure what we're facing 
Okay, we're going to pass the turn. But this is definitely a matchup where Veil vale Summer is going to be good. In fact, most of the matches this league Veil vale Summer was an all-star, is going to be an all-star. Okay, uh, I'm going to peer in response. See if I can get lucky and hit past in flames or something. So many discards. So little time. Just take a twiddle. Give them no choices. All right, Thought Caesar. Let's go. They're the same picture. It doesn't matter. Let's go. All right, so they're black white. Probably avoid one over a deck, which would make this make sense. That was a good draw. I'll take it. All right, so we need to hope that there's a certain two mana black card that is not played this turn. I guess I could have played around it by playing another land out this turn. I didn't think of it until I had already cast it. Uh, let's see if I get punished. The disrespect on me by not playing around that card. All right, so they know that they're hitting Twiddle here. I'm guessing that they have the Ephemerate. No. Okay, we're just going to pass. Don't even do anything because then it's a sign that we might have drawn a spell. So many discard, though. All right, let's uh, go get the vents. I don't know if it really matters the order that you cast those in. Take the ideas. Okay, do we draw puppetry off the top rope? No. Um, wondering if I even cast ideas here. Probably. All right. Would it be? Okay, so we probably want to slight into breach here. Um, I don't know. Fast and Flames is weirdly not good enough. Uh, you'd have no mana floating. If we had another Twiddle, this would win the game. But maybe we should just take it anyway. Uh, discard it and then try to win next turn or if we draw a twiddle off this reach I should probably keep the wish on top um, I think it's probably better to keep the land so I was trying to figure out in my head if it's better to keep passing flames in hand or keep the land well if they play a discard spell then you have nothing uh, where and we know that we have a dead card on Wush on top, so you wouldn't be able to flash it back anyway. By keeping the island, you guarantee your ability to win if they don't have Graveyard Hate main deck. So there is a card that beats us here, but I'm just you can't beat everything, so I'm gonna try to just win with Fast and Flames. I should probably check the converted mana cost on that card anyway. I can't remember if it's three or four. It is one white and a black. So three converted mana cost. Their opponent can cast it. It's in their color pie. Do you know what it is? Don't do it. Don't do it. Vindicate? Sure. Um, so we did have the land. We can play Wish in a Breach. That should probably win. No, that doesn't win. We need six mana for that. Is there anything good I can do with this then? No is the answer. <laughs> um, so maybe they'll think I was trying to flashback past in flames. Flashback past in flames win and wish and a breach require the same amount of mana. Collector Brutality. Nice. All right. So we are still on the draw land plan. I scried one to the bottom two off the vision, so I feel sort of dumb right now. 
Well, how was I supposed to know we would be in this situation? All right, well, that is a, a six mana source. Vindicate that, Joe. Vindicate that. All right. Let's try to do some damage here. So many twiddles. If we draw into double uh, psychic puppetry, we could actually use double puppetry in this situation. Let's cast ideas. Ooh, that was good. All right, so we really want to find a puppetry now. So I'm going to cast Peer. There we go. Should likely be smooth sailing from here. Okay. Uh-oh. We hit double pop. We need one more mana to turn it on. Do I have a reach? We do. Okay. Double splice incoming. Mana for days. Now we can peer with double splice. This is so sweet. I would love an Ideas Inbound. Pure double splice. This is just like Pioneer Lotus at the moment. Okay. Pure double splice. So many mana. Should probably take Wish. Okay. Oh, the grape shot's already in the graveyard. I forgot about that. I do like that wish means that we don't just like flat out lose if grape shot gets exiled or something. Like that's pretty nice in my opinion. Okay. Too bad we don't have a third lotus to untap. We could actually just like win with Vassal's Oracle here, which I think is pretty funny. Maybe we should do that. For the sake of winning with Oracle in one of the games, I mean, I think I could probably draw 15 cards if the opponent doesn't concede. And it looks like they're not, so maybe I'll get lucky. All right. Oh, I've already flashed back um, Past in Flames. My bad. I saw the red cards, and I just assumed that this wish was a Past in Flames. Uh, so I don't know if I can actually draw 13. Maybe. I just don't know. Um, I do have a Breach. Yeah, I can probably win. With Oracle, that is. Not just with Grape Shot. Okay. I mean, I said I was going to win with Oracle. Now I feel like I'm sort of obligated to. Or else I just, like didn't you know keep my word so this is all for all of you me wasting time and clicks for the memes done okay so our deck is a division of three which means i can just double ideas inbound maybe they're hoping that i deck that's entirely possible opponent you know what just in case something kooky happens here I should cast Wish. Okay. And then I'll cast another Wish, just in case. Um, now we get ideas. This is just like the definition of win more. All right, now we play Oracle. We have Veil and uh, Pack Backup. We're Doomsday. We just Doomsdayed in Modern. You know, they said that they wanted to bring it to Modern. We did it without the card Doomsday. Here we are. We drew our entire deck in one turn and only took till turn eight. It was a fantastic game. I hope you enjoyed it. No sarcasm. All right. So Veil Summers occurred. We definitely want here. I don't know how I feel about the Aria. We saw Vindicates. Makes me a little uh, suspect. Yeah, so I think we could probably board out Slights, and then, like, maybe a couple copies of Twiddle. Maybe one of each. We definitely want more action spells in our deck and less uh, Rituals, because our opponent's a discard deck. We just want the, we want the goods. 
but we'll make uh, like random ideas wins more difficult that's for sure something we might be looking to do in post sport games is just use eve instead of using the graveyard um i'm not sure if our opponent plays outs but we'll likely find out veil summer is likely just going to be a house here if you would like to support this content, you can go to theepicstorm.com slash shop and pick up a mini token pack. For $12, you get 54 combo tokens. 20 storm, 10 black, 10 red, 5 blue, 3 of the rest. It's just terrific value. Make sure you go check that out. Game 2. And we've opened up a pretty good hand. We just need to draw land 2. Um, there's no way I'm going to ship this. And we're likely going to get hit by turn one discard spell here, so we're losing Serum Visions or Veil. That, those would be my two guesses. Probably Veil from the discard deck. Joe strikes me as someone who does not like getting hit by Veil of Summer. But sees Serum Visions, so they left us the Veil. They're saying, I don't think you're going to draw a second land. Well, they would be wrong. Uh, but Lotus Field was not the land we wanted. Silent clearing from the opponent. Into Stoneforge. Sure. Cauldra complete incoming. I could cycle Veil. Oh, no, I can't cycle Veil. That is not true. Even if I could cycle Veil, I wouldn't want to here. I think you're supposed to hold on to it and just hope to draw the land. Never lucky. Yep. So we're going to go to 15. We're just going to take the five. No, no point in twiddling. Okay. Good draw. Question is, can we even do anything next turn? I think the answer is no. So they're swinging for six. We're going to go to nine and then seven. So we're dead next turn if they have a collector brutality or plus one damage somehow. We'd actually like them to cast a black spell right now because then I could veil it. But if we do that, I think we're just dead. Um, so we'll go to seven. I guess I, I would go to six. So I'd need to get really lucky. I guess I, I did leave in Perilous Voyage. I, I could bounce the germ, maybe. What is this? Okay. I don't know what this gets. Pretty cool card, though. From Modern Horizons 2. Unmarked Grave. What is that? Unburial Rites? Okay. So... Like I said, I can put myself to one. I think that's probably the best thing to do. And then here, I don't know. <laughs> Lotus three. Um, we're probably realistically we're probably just dead. Maybe I should have gotten. Um, the breeding pool and then just like kept them on tap this turn because now if i get thought seized on the twiddle there's just no chance i win or discarded on the twiddle weirdly enough because we boarded out twiddles so let's say that our opponent doesn't kill us they also don't have discard hypothetically i can twiddle wish twiddle pass in flames so boarding out a twiddle actually mattered here um so let's see if they have the discard spell. What is this? Is it brutality? What's going on here? Oh, they were choosing modes. Uh, yeah, we're dead. Game three. Okay. Kind of cool, though, that the boarding out twiddle line almost mattered. I think maybe I messed up there, 
So hypothetically, let's say I just play, um, like I fetch the breeding pool and I pass, hypothetically. From there, I would play my uh, Lotus Field on the next turn, floating two mana, I would twiddle, I'd have four mana, I would go get the other twiddle, and that brings me up to four, and I wouldn't have enough mana to pass in flames. So I would have had to have drawn something off the Elf Summer, assuming that our opponent even cast a black spell. So I don't know if that line was actually better or worse. Interesting to think about, though. If you are unfamiliar, I am a part of the Eternal Glory podcast. We're available on all major podcast platforms. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Phil Gallagher and Brian Koval. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, we have plenty of episodes that the information transfers across formats. Make sure to check us out. Like I said, all major podcast platforms. Game three, and we're on the play in black white. <sighs> Sure. I don't love this because just the the discard spell on Bushclaw is going to be backbreaking. So we need land two. We need it to be watery grave and we need to not be hit by discard. Our opponent's taking a mulligan to six. I mean, this hand's fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm just like not in love with it. Like if Past and Flames was a fetch land, this hand is considerably better. Okay. Let's do it. Steam vents. I would love to pay two life to cast this Serum Visions. No lands. Got to go on the bottom. I knew that was going to happen. Like, I could feel it in my gut that that Visions was not going to hit a land. So now our opponent's stuck in a position where if they play turn one discard, do they hit the Reach Through Mist or do they take Wishclaw Talisman? All right, so they're giving us the window if we can draw an untapped black source here. Land? It's gonna be one of these games. All right. You know, I've been playing 19 lands the whole time. Damping Sphere. Yikes. I guess we get rid of Past and Flames here. We have uh, Perilous Voyage in our main deck. We also could Wish for an out. But uh, I think that Sphere is going to do a lot of work against us. Yeah, now Liliana. I don't think we're going to win this game. There was maybe a chance if we hit our black land on time, but not anymore. I think we're just dead. Like, I've been playing 19 lands the entire time I've been playing Twiddle Storm. But in this league, it just feels like my one landers aren't going as far. And I don't know how much of that is Wish over two copies of Slight. Uh, I'd have to rewatch to actually find out. I think I have to discard the Veil. Like, we are not winning this game at all if I'm holding up Veil for a turn. And a second copy of Sphere. Um, I don't know how we beat that. Yeah. All right, uh, two and two. Yeah, two and two. Round five coming up. The final match. Let's get it. We're on the play. All right, our classic one land, uh, never going to draw land two hand. Yikes. Realistically, this hand's pretty good. We just have to draw land two. I'll stop being negative. What the fuck? We have to put these on the bottom. All right. Um, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to keep those hands. I've seen this deck before. Yeah, I should have known. Come on, deck, please. Just give me the land. <sighs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
All right, so our opponents played a bunch of stuff. Sorry, I was quiet, so that probably got clipped off. They played Urza Saga into Springleaf Drum. Emery, Bobble, what else? Sorry, I'm just a little, little frustrated at uh, some of my fortune this league. I mean, I, some of this is me doing it to myself. I don't know. Sure. Uh, I'm just going to discard Claw. We don't even need Claw at this point anymore. I'm just going to get rid of it. We're probably going to be dead to this uh, beater before we can even get our Lotus into play. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to go up to 20 lands, so that way I draw more lands when I resolve my ideas inbound. I don't know. Yeah, so we're probably dead. Not this turn, but we need two more turns in order to win. So this turn we're taking 10, even if I tap one of these next turn. I guess I could double. All right, so here's the plan. I draw another blue source. And then we double tap these with our dream scripts and our twiddle. And then I untap. I, I'm sorry. I thought that was a puppetry. Maybe I'm just dead. And it never mattered. Wow. All right. That was rough. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I do wonder if maybe these fatal pushes should be bounce spells. Look great. Granted, we didn't face any um, blitz decks this uh, league, but maybe it would just be better if these were additional bounce spells so that way you're not caught off guard by like an Alpine Moon or, I don't know, um, Damping Spheres in the last league. Like if those were echoing truth or something else. Sure. All right, Scalding Tarn, pass. Memnite, Bobble, Bridge, okay. So we're going to fetch four Watery Grief here in case we draw a Claw. Okay. Voyage wasn't the worst draw. I don't know if we want to be burning it, though. Interesting that they didn't use the bobble either. Okay. If they're just not going to do anything, I'm just going to play Lotus and pass. All right. Let's bounce this, I suppose. So reach is a nice draw because it allows us to potentially have a win this turn without investing a twiddle. So like if I draw into something good here with the reach, I can in theory keep comboing or I can just pass. So like push claw. Um, so what would I like to do here? Uh, so five, seven mana. I could go get breach, but like we don't really have a whole lot to do with breach. I could get ideas, but if we fill it with ideas, it feels kind of bad. Um, could get past in flames. I don't think we have enough for uh, a wish breach line. We only have eight total mana. That would be way more than that. Um, I could just play claw pass. I don't know what good that actually does me. All right, so let's just start off with twiddle, I suppose. And let's look. So we have a lot of mana if we take the Past and Flames route. The problem is we just don't have a lot of action. I'm just going to hope to get a little bit lucky here. All right. Ideas. Carry me. Lift me to the Promised Land. Well, that wasn't uh, awful. I think this should win. We should get to do the uh, the Breach Loop again. All right, so now we get Underworld Breach. Twiddle. 
Do I need to burn the puppetry? There's a chance I need to burn puppetry here. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter either uh, because we don't need this anymore. All right, so now we twiddle again. We can remove the other twiddle. This doesn't matter. All right, and now we wish. I guess we can burn the red mana. Get Tome Scour. Target ourselves. Target ourselves. Twiddle. Land, land, peer. All right, and that means that we have this game. We just have to go through the motions again. Uh, cancel. Tome Scour. Every loop is plus one card, so we just have to do enough loops. Okay, and now we twiddle. We're just going to remove the past in flames. It doesn't matter. We're not going to cast it. All right, Tome Scour again. Tome Scour again. Pretty sweet. Twiddle. Okay, only 15 cards left in deck, so we only have to scour three more times. And there's Grape Shot, so we can actually just Grape Shot the opponent. No need to win with Oracle here. Look at all that Storm Count. I think that's the coolest thing about this league so far, is the Wish Breach loop uh, is definitely really powerful. So our opponent didn't make us cast it there. But I'm beginning to think that maybe these pushes in the board should be bounce balls. That's a change I want to test. I really liked a Veil of Summer this league. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we can get by with one Aria on the board. I don't know if you need to, just because boarding it in with the Veils has been difficult. It's just a lot of slots. Then again, we faced like this uh, matchup here, the blue-white artifact deck. It's the first non-black deck we faced all league. Which has been a little bit weird so no blitz this league no hammer time none of that stuff uh just black green x or black x i did force a win with oracle um we didn't need to but it happened five green cards in her deck Whew. only like I don't know, 13 more and we could support Force of Vigor. Something like that. I I do sort of wonder if we shouldn't be playing the Past in Flames. Like, if the Past in Flames should just be another breach to help fuel the combo that's been so successful already. I do wonder about that. But that said, we've had a few wins this league where the Past in Flames is huge. Cage, sure. We can win without the Graveyard. It's just a little bit more difficult. Okay, so we have Claw, which is probably going to be looking to get Psychic Puppetry. We're down to two cards in hand, and this is a pretty aggressive start for the opponent. All right, so we're taking two here. Next turn, we're taking eight. Down to one card. They haven't popped Bobble, which is a little strange. All right, so we can just play the Claw here. So next turn's go time. Um, yeah, they didn't pop bobble. That's so strange to me. We could like try to buy a turn with Twiddle. I don't know if that's worth it. So do we want to force it right now is the question. So I could try to Visions, but the problem is if I miss with Visions, we're definitely dead. Um, because then I have to burn the twiddle. All right, I think we're sp probably supposed to just jam. So many lands. Not feeling too confident in this. All in on ideas. Getting psychic puppetry. If we had one more mana, we could cast visions first, which would make me feel a little bit better. Sure. 
Okay, which is a reasonable start. Maybe we can make blockers with AV or Eve. So this goes up to four. I think we're probably supposed to just visions. Underworld breach. I don't think double puppetry is going to do anything meaningful here. Um, let's just think about this. So let's say that I put double pup on top. I cast reach, which would be from four. Like I could maybe wish in a grape shot and clear their board to buy time. Um, maybe that's worth it. I think the alternative is I bottom both and pray to hit and ideas or appear off this draw. I don't know how good the, the grape shot line is. So that would be four five mana. Yeah. So it's definitely only a grape shot line. So that'd be from four, five, six. Seven, eight, it's exactly enough to wipe their board. They have one card in hand, but they're drawing two. The problem with this line, in my opinion, is that we have a breach versus their cage and nothing going on in hand. I think I'm gonna go big. All right, come on, ideas and bound off the top. Not good enough. Um, well, maybe it buys me a turn. That's actually somewhat relevant. Um, yeah. Okay. So then we have to discard Breeding Pool, Lotus Field, and Watery Grave. I can get an island with the Tarn. Not sure how we're going to win this. I guess uh, if I drew the main deck voyage, I could do it. My dad? Yep. Dead. Bomber, that's a 2 3. Yeah, I don't know if it's me. I don't really feel like I did. Like, I kept some hands that maybe were mulligans, I, I guess, but. A lot of those seemed like keeps to me. So what I'm wondering here is if these should be bounce spells, and I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. We can convert Aria into something else. Maybe something I'd be interested in the board is like a, uh, a Shattering Spree, just so that way you can use Wish. Because Wish requires you to answer it in one turn. So if your opponent has something like a, um, a damping sphere or a cage you don't have to do everything all in one turn you could separate it out over a few turns so something like that interests me so maybe like a one of shattering spree or something like that and something i'm wondering is do we think that my one land losses had anything to do with wish not being additional copies of sleight of hand i'm also thinking that maybe i want a second copy of breach main and not a past in flames uh, and just turning this deck into a few, uh, uh, like a pure breach deck with the Tome Scour win. That's something I'm interested in exploring. I'm sorry that I only went two and three, but I do think we got to see some of the power of Wish here. Let me know your thoughts. Should I lean harder into Wish? Should we become more of a breach deck? I'd be interested to hear. Um, not every league is going to be a success. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Keep storming. Hey. Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.